How do redstone systems remember? Say when I push this button, my door opens. It stays open. I can leave, go, and beat the ender dragon, come home, and it's still open. But how does it remember? A button just gives us a pulse. You're probably thinking, dude, just use a lever. And I mean, okay, fair point. The problem is, what if I want my redstone to flip the lever for me? It just doesn't work that way. So to do this, we need to use memory circuits. Fortunately, they're really easy to build and to understand. There are many types of memory circuits, but one of the most popular one is the RS NOR latch. There are a bunch of ways to make an RS NOR latch, but perhaps the most simple and compact is the dropper dropper latch. But what does it do? Well, you can see one light is on and the other is off. When I push this button, it switches to the other light. And when I push this one, it switches backwards. If I continue to push the same button, nothing happens. It's only if it's switching states. This is what a RS NOR latch does. It's an output selector. There are two inputs and two outputs. The buttons correspond to different outputs. It's very easy to build and pretty flexible. Just face two droppers into each other. Put blocks adjacent to each dropper with a potential power source into them. Now just add comparators out from each dropper and add one item into one of the droppers and it's done. Both buttons will switch the power to their corresponding outlet. These can be in a number of orientations and will work as long as the powering blocks are adjacent to the dropper and they are able to take a comparator off. But powering directly to the dropper doesn't work. Why you ask? Well, it's pretty simple. Basically, if you power the dropper directly, you will power both of the droppers. So essentially, you will send the item from the right dropper to the left, then back again to the right dropper, all during the same game day, since the droppers are powered at the same time. From a player perspective, the item never moves. Okay, so that's RS NOR latches, but what if I want to have the same functionality as, say, a lever? Well, that's perhaps the next most popular memory circuit, the T flip-flop. Again, there are many ways to make these, but the dropper dropper system is one of the more popular ones. T flip-flop is basically a lever, but it's activated by redstone. So when we put a pulse into this corner dropper, we activate it and turn it on. If we put another pulse in, it will turn it off, just like that lever. So an RS NOR latch has two inputs, and the T flip-flop only has one input. It is again, very easy to build. We just place one dropper facing towards us, then a dropper facing up that the first dropper is facing into, then a dropper on top of that second dropper and facing in the direction of the first dropper. Then we add a hopper on top and into the first dropper, a comparator out of the first dropper and an item into the second dropper, which I refer to as the corner dropper. Now we directly power the corner dropper to make it work. One pulse will turn it on and the next pulse will turn it off. This is an interesting circuit because when we press this button, it will take the item all the way from here into this top hopper and down into this bottom one in the same game tick. It works because all three droppers are activated when the corner dropper is powered, which makes them all potentially push items during the same game tick. The corner and the top droppers both push the item, but the bottom dropper doesn't because the hopper adds delay, meaning that it activates before the item reaches it, resulting in it doing nothing. So what about from on to the off state? In the on state, we have an item in this bottom hopper. If all three droppers activate when we power this corner dropper, then why doesn't the item go all the way up and into the hopper? Well, this is where it gets a little bit weird. If I power the dropper with a button or any other strongly powered source, then it will work as intended every time. So the item goes from this bottom dropper into this corner dropper and no further. But what happens if I weakly power it with redstone dust? Well then, it doesn't work. The item goes all the way from this bottom dropper into the hopper and back down into itself. Strange, right? Well wait, it gets even stranger. What if I change the direction that we're powering from and power in from this direction? Now it works again. This is really weird. But what's happening is we are basically running into the game's update order. It's a very complicated topic and we won't cover it much at all. But the main takeaway from this is the impact of strongly powering that dropper, which is necessary for it to function consistently. 
This is really simplifying it, but in general, in instant dropper lines like this, the game will calculate the strongly powered dropper first in the update order. Meaning that when an item is shot into this dropper, it will stop in this dropper because it has already activated before these other two droppers, meaning that the item was not in it when it activated, so then it won't shoot the item further on unless it's activated again. So in our example, our corner dropper is strongly powered. So during the game tick that the droppers are activated, the corner dropper activates first. Nothing is in it, so nothing happens. Then during the same game tick, but after the corner dropper has been activated, the item is sent from the bottom dropper into the corner dropper. The top dropper also does nothing because it has not received an item from the corner dropper since the corner dropper was activated before it had that item in it. So the quick takeaway is this. Block update order is weird and confusing, but can have a pretty big impact. And Redstone Dust is even weirder in this regard. It's not actually the strong powering that is making the difference, but powering without using Redstone Dust, which is giving us that consistency. Anyways, that's it. A quick overview of the perhaps two most popular latches. Huge shout out to Megatronic and Integral Zero for inspiring this video with their T flip flop magic in my first trading haul video. Check them out and consider subscribing. So that's going to do it. So thank you so much for watching and good night.